Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vaishnavi Rao. I am going to be speaking to you about uh, um, IVF ICSI procedure. So IVF is in vitro fertilization. This is a process, one of the process uh, which is an assisted reproductive technique which involves fertilization which is done outside the body. So that is why it is called as in vitro fertilization. So the procedure basically involves uh, the lady coming in on her day 2 or day 3 of her menstrual period and we check the scan for the antral follicle count and along with that we do her day 2 levels of FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone along with the routine workup that is required in order to see her general health of the uh, person before starting any IVF medication. So what we do here in the IVF procedure is after all these evaluation has been done we would want to start with the gonadotrophin inject injections so that uh, we can enlarge the FSH window which is um, supposed to um, which we are supposed to do in order to allow for multiple follicular growth. So this is done starting on day two and about maybe three or four days of injectable gonadotrophin injections are given along with that we call her back for a scan after uh, about four days and check for the scan and the estrogen levels again. So basically what estrogen level tells us is the functional activity of the follicle and we need to correlate this both biochemically and clinically with ultrasounds in order to see for adequate response. So this goes on for at least a period of 10 to 12 days depending on the uh, response of the patient. So we would also counsel the couple and tell them about whatever I have said till now. So as I was talking about injectable gonadotrophins, so that uh, pr procedure of uh, taking injections would go up to 10 to 12 days, followed by an egg retrieval procedure, which is called an oocyte pickup procedure. So this is done when the follicles reach a size of 17 millimeter, about three in number, and the estrogen, uh, pr uh, progesterone, and the luteinizing hormone levels are checked and the injectable gonadotrophin dosage is continued on the day of trigger. Followed by 35 hours later, we do an egg pickup. Um, so in the egg pickup, we confirm what is an uh, advantage of the IVF is, we confirm whether the egg is present after doing a follicular aspiration and uh, what is the maturity, maturity status of the egg, the quality of the egg and how many of them being mature and those mature eggs are only mixed with the husband's sperm. So obtaining an informed consent for any procedure is very vital. So when it comes to IVF as we have been uh, speaking about it till now, the consent involves uh, the signature of both the husband and the wife and the type of gametes that we'll be using, either the self gametes or the anonymous donor gametes. So this consent is first up obtained before we start any IVF stimulation. So when it comes to uh, drug administration, each drug may have its own side effect so it is not certain that every drug has will produce a side effect because each person is different so minimal side effects can be encountered like headache nausea vomiting bloating abdominal distension or even mild or um, maybe moderate ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so this hyperstimulation results uh, it uh, comes due to the administration of the exogenous gonadotrophin injections um, that is used for the purpose of IVF but we have got newer drugs which helps us to control this and even by freezing the embryos it would give a better chance of pregnancy in the next cycle. So the procedure of IVF is done uh, when there has been multiple failed cycles of uh, uh, ovulation induction and giving gonadotrophins and doing an IUI or it could be because of the tubal factors, the tubes being blocked or it could be endometriosis or a poor ovarian reserve. And ICSI is basically done for, for main male factor indications which could be low sperm count. So uh, what to expect after an IVF ICSI procedure? What advantage does it have over a natural, naturally trying, uh, uh, for a naturally trying couple or whereas a couple who has gone for an IUI? What are the things that we would gain more by doing an IVF would be, we would know whether the presence of an egg is there, 
whether the mature status of the egg has been of a good quality or whether the uh, em embryos have been formed and what is the quality of the embryo. So, so much can be established by doing an IVF ICSI procedure, uh, but uh, doing the embryo transfer and the implantation happening is not 100%. So, the chance of implantation can never be told that it is going to be 100%. Knowing the egg quality and the sperm quality and the embryo quality would give us an idea along with the endometrial um, appearance, would give us an idea as to whether we can actually expect a pregnancy or not. So the chances of success with this, depending on the patient uh, profile, would go up to anywhere between 40 to 50 percent. So what could be the risks involved in an IVF procedure? As we know that we are administering exogenous gonadotrophins in the form of injections, these are hormonal um, hormonal um, effects which have hormonal effects so these uh, hormones are actually produced in the body but they are given in the form of injectables so uh, these injections can have a side effect of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome like um, and having bloating uh, pain abdomen nausea vomiting and some uh, percentage of patients also develop ovarian hyperstimulation so what does ovarian hyperstimulation mean so as a result of obtaining uh, lot, a lot of follicles um, after the procedure of IVF, um, uh, we could have the estrogen level which could be elevated to quite an extent. So that could result in a ovarian hyperstimulation. So this would lead to enlargement of the ovaries and uh, fluid accumulation in, uh, in uh, spaces in the paracolic gutter, the um, uh, pouch of Douglas. So, which usually can be controlled, as I already mentioned about newer uh, drugs which are available for ovarian hyperstimulation. So, if ever uh, ovarian hyperstimulation occurs in an IVF cycle, we do not do the embryo transfer, thereby avoiding the risk of OHSS. Because in case the patient gets pregnant, then the, there could be a superimposed ovarian hyperstimulation which can continue throughout in the first trimester. And it can also make the patient feel miserable. So doing elective cryopreservation of embryos would be the best in order to adopt a OHSS free clinic. So in IVF, many people have a doubt uh, saying whether we would have twins, triplets, quadruplets. So the chance of multiple pregnancy is increased in an IVF cycle is because we, um, uh, when we do an embryo transfer, we at least put about three embryos of uh, eight cell uh, um, grade, uh, eight cell that's day three embryos or do a blastocyst transfer which would mean a single blastocyst transfer in order to avoid a twin pregnancy. So why do we put three embryos is because to enhance the chance of implantation of at least one. The idea is not to have a twin pregnancy. So the whole goal of an IVF procedure should be a single twin pregnancy having a um, uh, delivery at term. So most people are um, usually wondering as to how an ectopic pregnancy can happen with an IVF procedure because we are saying that it is uh, done outside and then deposited as in the embryo form into the uterus. So when we do an IVF procedure, when we are actually putting the embryos in a place which is a maximum implantation potential after preparing the endometrium, the, the ostea, uh, the tubal ostea may be open. So embryos are living structures that can roll on and uh, find its own place to get implanted. So there is a chance that when we put a, the embryos about 1.5 centimeters below the fundus of the uterus, uh, there can be a chance that it can get into the tubes. So the minimal chance of an ectopic pregnancy happening is always there in an IVF procedure.